original Borderlands was largely defined by the gratuitous variability of its weapons. Gearbox went to great lengths to stock the game with a ridiculously large number of possible weapon variations, and this well-publicized feature seemed to pay off in spades. Goaded on the promise of shinies and their insatiable hunger for loot, players sunk endless hours into the RPG shooter hybrid, and chalked up ever higher damage numbers as they blasted their way through numerous DLC expansions. We got to play Borderlands 2 at a recent hands-on event, and though it retains this feeling of compulsory discovery, our experience suggests that it'll be a leaner, more disciplined game overall. The environments we visited were full of genuinely cool points of interest, and the sense of place was complemented by monsters that felt like they actually belonged in the places where you encountered them. The hard game mechanics in the demo we played felt similarly refined. While we didn't play enough to take an exhaustive inventory of how things work, here are a few quick points that really stuck out. The demo we played had two characters available, Maya the Siren and Salvador the Gunzerker. Both have defining abilities that operated on a cooldown, which you could access right from the get-go. Salvador has the ability to go into a gun's akimbo rage and lay waste to his targets for a few seconds. Maya, meanwhile, is able to entrap enemies with her phase lock, lifting them off the ground and leaving them vulnerable to the brutal exploitation of her teammates. Depending on how you spec yourself out, the phase lock will have different secondary properties to reinforce whatever role you want to play, whether it's playing more of a support role or dealing out specific types of damage. Borderlands 2 creative director Paul Hellquist spoke to us at length about how the different gun manufacturers will have their brand identities emphasized in the sequel. A good example is the TDOR line of firearms, which, in the game's lore, are disposable mass-produced pieces of junk. Rather than replace their clips when you're running low on bullets, you can simply hurl the spent weapons at your enemies like grenades. The more ammo remaining, the bigger the blast. Hellquist also mentioned that the stories surrounding the manufacturers will be more pronounced, which could go a long way toward expanding the game's fiction by exploring one of the more interesting corners of Borderlands lore. <laughs> Enemies in the original Borderlands are famously resilient, especially in the early goings when your arsenal is on the puny side. Based on what we played, it's the same in Borderlands 2, though we encountered an enemy whose design took smart advantage of the game's beefy hit point counts. A gigantic creepy crawler with mineral encrusted appendages. The only way to effectively damage it is to focus your fire on its crumbly bits, which then explode into valuable pickups. The dynamic makes sense in the Borderlands world in two ways. One, you don't feel as if you're feebly sapping away at the creature's life total since you're producing visual results, and two, taking a smart approach to fighting yields even more delicious loot. We truly hope to see more monsters with similarly exploitable weaknesses. From what we experienced, Borderlands 2 inspires the same driving urge to explore, destroy, and acquire that its predecessor did. By the time it releases in September, though, it'll be far from the only loot-driven game in town. Keep an eye out for our full review to see how it measures up.